Hello guys. So I have been getting a lot of feedback and cool ideas from the community to improve my designs. And what I want to start doing is to share my work in progress. So before I post the finished designs on Thingiverse, and also I just like to uh, keep people updated since my designs have been getting quite a lot of attention lately and um, I just hope you guys find this interesting. So please let me know what you think and if you'd like to see more comment like content like this in the future. All right, so I have basically four ongoing little projects at the moment. It's the Gate Hunter SLS 3, a free inch. I have a remix of my Gate Hunter frame that I will probably call CTS5. I'm also doing a little freestyle build, um, not with a frame that I designed, but with this Sky Stars frame. And I still have all my little three inch ultralight builds going on. So let's start with this CTS5, Gate Hunter CTS5 prototype that I'm working on. So as you can see, some of the parts aren't cut out of carbon yet. They are still um, 3D printed out of PLA, but I hope to move to carbon prototypes for this top plate soon. So the CTS is based on my RS frame, this one here. And while RS stands for racing specification, CTS stands for classic top plate specification. So I know that's not very creative, but that's what it is. And the idea of the CTS, why I'm building this at the moment, is that I wanted to do something a little more beginner friendly and easier to build and maintain because this RS frame is really a no compromise, high performance racing frame that has a super small footprint and therefore really good aerodynamics. So this has hardly any drag. This is really compact, but that also means that you have quite little room here in this canopy. Um, if we compare this to the CTS, this is much more relaxed. We have full 25 millimeters of height here to work with and put your stack in. So these 25 millimeters should be enough usually to fit three boards. The arms are identical to the RS series. So we'll keep the same arms. They will be interchangeable. These braces um, will stay the same too. These are the uh, exact same ones then here on the RS and um, a few things I'm working on is this little flip stick here. So that should allow the quad to turtle and this works much better than a fin because that's a problem with this RS series. The frame is really low. So even with the fin, the props aren't really high above the ground. So if you're in higher grass, turtling gets difficult. So this is why I'm experimenting with these sticks here. The top plate has some extra slots that have exactly the right distance to mount a TBS Unify race. And so I'm, I'm really trying to make this thing easy to build and um, fun to use. It will have some good camera protection, I hope. So you can see the camera is deep inside the frame protected by these TPU parts. And the build I'm doing right now is featuring these, let me get those in focus, <laughs> these really nice Emacs Eco motors. They are super cheap, I think like $9 or $10 a piece, but they look really good. What I have here at 2207, 1900 kV. So I'm building this on 6S, 1900 is a lot for 6S. Um, so I'm curious to see how this performs. Uh, worst case, is I will have to slightly throttle limit this. I have the Cadix Rattel here, which I really liked. This one is the 1.66 millimeter lens. So I already use the bigger lens um, and I'm looking forward to try out a smaller one with a bigger field of view and see how I like that. The stack I'm going to use is the Diatone Mamba F7. Speaking of Gate Hunter frames, I made a little update of my GoPro mount canopy. Um, so as you maybe know, I have made a 
version of this canopy that has these standard mounts for GoPro cages and any GoPro accessory. And I slightly updated it. So as you can see, I, I made the mounts a little bit stiffer and I have added a new version. So previously I only had one of a hole for SMA antennas. Now there is, is a second version of this GoPro canopy that has the little hole for lollipop antennas or axi antennas, they both fit here in this new version. So this will be on Thingiverse soon. Work in progress number two is the SLS3 or Mini Gate Hunter. So I had a couple of people request that I make a three inch version of my SLS5. This is the SLS5. And um, of course, it wasn't enough to just take this ultralight five inch frame and give it shorter arms. I had to make a little more adjustments for it to make sense. So all the M3 hardware was replaced by M2 hardware. So these are smaller screws, which makes a pretty big weight difference. And I went from four millimeter arms and bottom plate, which are kind of overkill for three inch to three millimeter. I also updated this canopy. So this now should fit a micro axi. I'm still waiting for mine that will hopefully arrive soon. I ordered it a couple of days ago. Um, the result is this little frame, weights 29 grams, including um, hardware and uh, excluding this brace. This build I have here, there's no VTX and antenna in there for the moment, but it weights 142 grams. So it should be possible without any issues to build this under 250 grams. I weighted it with an 850 milliamp hour R-line battery, which is really quite heavy. And I was slightly above 250 grams. And also at the moment I have an XT60 in this slightly too big capacitor on there. So um, this is the SLS3. I'm hoping to give this um, a lot of test flights as soon as possible and also release this on Thingiverse as soon as I know that it's reliable. I have tested it and I'm happy with it. Work in progress number three. This one is a frame that I didn't design. This is the Sky Stars Star Lord frame. I think I saw this on Banggood and I just had to have it. It looks really nice in my opinion. It's a beautiful frame. It's obviously inspired by the um, Johnny FPV frame from Astro and the Pity Soldat frame. They look pretty similar, but it's not a full on clone. So this is, yeah, I'd say it, it's similar. It's probably inspired, but it's not a clone. So I think this is fine. Um, what I will use to build this frame uh, is this really nice Flywoo ESC with the motors that go with it. So that look should look super cool. I also replaced the standoffs by golden ones to make this whole thing color matched. There is just one thing I really didn't like about this frame and that was the TPU parts this frame came with. These really look super bad. So um, let me try to open this. I don't know what they used to, to print this. It must have been super, super fast. Uh, so these TPU parts look horrible. So what I want to do with this frame is design a whole set of custom TPU parts, a GoPro mount, a mount for Crossfire, a mount for the VTX to make this really perfect because also, although this frame looks really nice, these holes here aren't really practical to fix stuff. So if you're trying to zip tie or tape the VTX and RX in here, these holes aren't really practical for that. So what I want to do is, is as I said, have a customized set of TPU parts that I release on Thingiverse that go with this frame and hopefully make it absolutely perfect to build. So that's my little ongoing project number three. All right, ongoing project number four are my super light three inch builds, the Sanchez and the Calimero. So these two frames that I released, two of the three that I have currently built are down because of ESC issues. So 
I never had the chance to fly these before the ESC burned out. Here it happened while test hovering. Here it happened while setting up beta flight. And um, there have been a lot of debates uh, in comment sections and wherever about which board is reliable and which isn't. So I had the beta FPV board, I had the Gepper C board and the um, Crazy V board. Pretty much all of them had some fail and I had some that worked flawlessly. So failed Gap RC board, perfectly working Gap RC board. And I also have a crazy bee that worked for months without any issues and still works. So my hypothesis right now is all of these products are kind of new. Um, maybe the production processes aren't super reliable, the quality checks aren't um, keeping up. I don't know why. But no matter which one you get, it's just about how lucky you are at the moment for pretty much all of them. So I can't give any uh, any perfect safe recommendation. What I can recommend is if you buy one of these boards that aren't 100% reliable at the moment, get them somewhere, for example, from Amazon, where you can quickly get replacement and return them if you catch a bad one that's all i can say for now um i will replace those boards and see how they work but it's just how about how lucky you are so good luck to you when buying electronics for your toothpick style quads at the moment